the June 2nd meeting of the Howitch Council on Aging. My name is Richard Waystack. I'm joined by Joanne Lepore, Ralph Smith, Angelina Chalaka, and of course, our director, Emily Mitchell. Prior to starting the meeting, I must read the following proclamation, proclamation by Governor Baker. Pursuant to his order of March 12, 2020, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order, imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Howard Council on Aging Board of Directors is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in that order. Remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded, will be available for the public to view shortly thereafter. Uh, good morning again, welcome to our members and those who may be watching, and I'll turn off my phone at the office so we won't be interrupted. Um, I will call the meeting to order and ask initially for an approval of our minutes of the May 5th, 2021 COA meeting. So moved. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye, Joanne. Aye. Ralph. Aye. Angelina. Yeah, aye. And I am an aye. Um, is there anyone here present for public comment? I don't see anyone here. We'll move on. And again, it's so good to see everybody. And as we've heard, if you've been monitoring what's been happening in town through and Dr. Katie O'Neill, our public health director, as well as our board of selectmen, things shall be opening up shortly. They're looking at June 15th as an opening of some of the public buildings in town. And God willing, next month, we will be in attendance together. We'll have a little further discussion about that later. I also wanna remind um, our members and those who may be watching, I was fortunate enough to be invited to sit on a panel um, with the Elder Services. And it's gonna be a legislative panel and talking about gaps in services here on Cape Cod. Um, I'm going to speak about a gentleman. Am I hearing feedback from someone by any chance? Yeah, something's going on. Seems like a dinging sound. It does mm. sound like it. I have that ringing in my head. I thought it was just me, but. Um, no. <laughs> oh, someone's clock. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. Um, ah. Sue Jusel, our town nurse, asked me to get involved a little bit with elder services on a couple of matters. Um, we've had a couple of situations in town where taxpayers who were in need of services that were lacking locally. Um, and it led to a discussion and uh, the panel, it's gonna be very interesting. There are a number of people attending. I'm going to forward to Emily a flyer. It's uh, June 15th at 1 p.m. It's gonna be a Zoom meeting and the entire Cape delegation will be present. And it's fortunate because it gives us an opportunity as the Harwich Council on Aging to talk about some of the gaps in the services. One of the big ones that we've been finding is in terms of housing. And it, it, we're at a couple of situations locally where we have some vulnerable seniors who are homeless in this community and trying to find a placement, both temporary and permanent for those folks. It also led to a further discussion about some of the programs that we're doing for the seniors in this community, conjunction with the Howard Council on Aging and the Board of Assessors, trying to lessen some of the impact of taxation on our members and the cooperation that we have had with our Cape delegation with getting some legislation filed and approved that has been beneficial. As a reminder, we are at the forefront of what's been happening on Cape Cod. And in dealing with this board, and I need to stop for a moment and, and recognize our staff, Sue Jusel, Emily, the entire community center staff. We, as a community, have done so much for our seniors, their families, and their caregivers. And in dealing with some of these other communities, I realized just how much we have been doing. It does not mean that we need to sit in our laurels. It means that we need to continue working to fill some of these gaps. And that's what this program will be, talking about the gaps in services, 
to those in need and senior the community here on Cape Cod. So I'd invite you all to attend if you wish, and uh, we will see that each of you gets a copy of the flyer. Um, my biggest push is going to be temporary and some more permanent housing for seniors, especially mm -hmm. on an emergency basis. To see people walking homeless in this community on a daily basis just should not happen. And uh, I know that I will work and I'll be continuing to work with Emily and those in the community to see what we can do to address that situation. That's it for me. I'm gonna turn things over to our very, very capable director, Emily Mitchell. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanna preface, I'm getting a notice that my internet connection is poor. So if at any point you, I pop off, just let me know and I'll backtrack. Um, so I'm excited to have a very brief vaccine update for you today. I know that's been the bulk of my report in prior months and it should be very short today. Um, Barnstable County is periodically releasing up-to-date statistics on vaccination rates. So I did include the numbers for Harwich. Those are as of May 18th, um, which is the most recent date that I have received. Um, but as you can see, over 95% of Harwich residents age 75 plus have received at least their first dose of a shot um, and 91% are fully vaccinated. So those are phenomenal numbers, not anything I could have imagined four or five months ago. Um, so I'm very excited to be able to share those rates with you. Um, otherwise, I'm, I'll move on from vaccines unless there are questions that folks have. Emily, just I apologize. That's 91% fully vaccinated over the age of 75? Correct, yes. Thank you. Yes, that's excellent. Anyone else? Yeah. All right, um, so then I wanted to spend the bulk of my report today talking about um, the status of our current operations and our plans for scaling up on-site operations. Um, so as I'm sure everyone is aware, both the CDC and the governor have um, significantly revamped their reopening guidance um, since we last met in the beginning of May. Um, there are no more restrictions at the state level in terms of capacity, um, activity specific restrictions, or uh, mask wearing, at least as of uh, for folks who are fully vaccinated. So at the town level, as Richard mentioned, we are looking at scaling up and reopening town buildings for us here at the community center. Um, we have been open to the public since June of 2020. So it's not so much a reopening, but a scaling up is how I'm uh, choosing to frame the transition period that we're in right now. Um, as of May 29th, the again, no masks were required per the governor, but the town has elected to require indoor mask wearing um, for all staff and for all visitors through June 15th. That was a decision made to coincide with um, an employee vaccination clinic that happened last week. So it should be right around June 15th that uh, town employees who participated in that clinic are fully vaccinated. Um, so at that point, masks will no longer be required inside, but they are required till that date. So that is a difference from the state guidance so about two more weeks of indoor mask wearing requirements um, for all town buildings. Um, there are some notable exceptions um, per the CDC guidance. Public transportation is an area that uh, requires continued mask usage. So that will impact our transportation program. Drivers and passengers will be required to wear masks, I believe until September is the current target date. Um, for, for mask wearing on transportation. So that's something that will impact our riders. Um, and we are planning to recommend continued mask usage for COA programs. Um, we do recognize that seniors are still in the highest risk category. Um, we have great vaccination rates, but that's specific to our year round population. We certainly have visitors coming from other areas that may not have the same vaccination rates. We're also not planning to ask people about their vaccination status. So we're acting as if not everyone is vaccinated and choosing to proceed with more precautions. Again, that's not going to be a mandate, but it is going to be a strong recommendation. Our full staff is planning to continue mask wearing 
um, right now through the summer and we'll reassess where we're at in the fall, um, but we won't be denying service or turning anyone away from programs if they're not wearing masks. Um, we are planning to still start with small groups where we can maintain physical distancing for the time being. Um, we're in the process of reaching out to group leaders and program instructors who we worked with pre-pandemic to kind of assess their readiness and interest in coming back. We have found that a number of people are not interested in coming back. Um, some people have moved away. Some people have chosen to transition to other interests or other ways of filling their time. Um, so I just kind of want to put the public on notice that yes, we are um, reaching out to folks, but not everything we did pre-pandemic will be coming back. We're hopeful to try and fill those gaps with new instructors or new group leaders, um, but it is gonna be a transition period for us. Um, so we are still targeting July for that to happen. Um, we'll plan to see some small groups in our activity rooms. Again, masks recommended. We'll still be you know, doing kind of a, a contact tracing. We'll be checking people in. So we have those records if needed, uh, but otherwise it's gonna look a lot more normal and more like pre-pandemic operations. Um, things that we're planning to bring back more slowly are the higher risk activities. So things like fitness programs with higher respiration rates um, are gonna come back more slowly. We're not planning to resume on-site congregate meals for the time being. We do plan to continue our lunch distribution program. So we'll still be serving that nutrition, daily nutrition need but it's gonna to continue to be a community-based model for now, rather than having folks from different households um, sitting together and eating together um, without physical distancing for the next few months. Um, we are kind of, again, I think I mentioned last month, it's a balance between our community-based programs and our on-site programs because we don't have the staff resources to you know, operate both simultaneously at full scale. So we're trying to scale down community-based services and scale up our on-site services simultaneously. Um, so that's our plan for right now. I don't know if I have any questions or feedback on those plans. Emily, one quick question. So for any event that we're going to have, sign-in will be required for all events for contract tracing? Contact tracing. Correct. Okay, super. Yes. Anybody else have questions relative to the uh, hearing? Up? Emily, are you comfortable with us trying to get back together, uh, spaced for a meeting on site? I am. I am. Um, the guidance I've received from administration, I believe they're targeting, um, they're going to bring back in person board of selectmen with in person public attendance, I think is their top priority. Um, and that'll be after that June 15th, I think their first meeting after June 15th. What we're gonna run into, I'm more concerned with is scheduling conflicts. So this building in particular, um, recreation is planning summer camps. There will be beach and transfer sticker sales happening in the building and all the community groups, um, non-COA, but community groups that use the space and have been on hold for 15 months are now eagerly looking to come back now that the uh, capacity and activity specific restrictions are lifted. Um, so my bigger concern, I think both for COA programs and potentially for in-person board meetings is just going to be figuring out um, how, to, how to reserve that space. So I am um, going to wait for further guidance from administration about transitioning committee and board meetings back to in-person. I think that guidance will come from them when it's authorized. Um, so I, without that guidance, I don't know that I would move forward with an in-person July meeting. Um, all we've been told so far is not before June 15th um, and that the Board of Selectmen will be prioritized. And then my assumption is that regulatory committees will be the next kind of priority for in-person meetings. Uh, so I eagerly await further guidance for, for how we'll transition back to in-person. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to it. I, I know one of my other committees, but we are a regulatory committee um, that we're trying to get back to schedule. It's very, very difficult doing it, especially when the majority of that meeting is executive session, but trying to bring, bring in members of the public who are filing abatements and for certain credits, et cetera. Very difficult to do it by, by Zoom. So um, great. Okay. Any other questions so far? Please continue. 
Sure. Um, so I know I mentioned in terms of staffing updates last month that we were um, in the process of firing, uh, finalizing hiring, not firing. <laughs> Connected those words incorrectly there. Important distinction, hiring a um, per diem town chef. That process is now final. Um, his name is Kevin Case. He began last week training with Linda. Uh, he has over 30 years of culinary experience um, and is really a addition to our team. Um, so we're looking forward to having him on board and um, he'll be planning to cover for Linda for a week in June solo. So he's jumping in, hitting the ground running. Um, and we're very excited that we'll no longer have to either cancel or scale down lunches when Linda is out. So it's been a long time coming. Linda's very grateful. Um, I'm very grateful and excited. So that's really good news. I just wanted to share that that process is now final. Kevin's great, by the way, Emily. Yes. Very, very talented. Very talented. Yes. Um, so that was it. Um, I wanted to keep um, providing updates on our leased vehicle. So we have received our new 14 passenger leased vehicle from CCRTA that was delivered to us, I think, in the first week of March. Unfortunately, the lease agreement is not yet signed. Um, CCRTA and our town council have been going. Emily, you broke, you broke up there. Could you repeat that? Emily, you have frozen. If you can hear us, you've frozen and you, you we've lost your audio at this time. Everyone, please stand by. online now we've got your audio no video okay i'm going to keep my camera off for the bandwidth issues um, and hope that you can continue to hear me um your audio was excellent thank you thank you um, you, had left, yeah. you had left off emily that the lease agreement had not yet been uh worked out between council okay. yes so it is um we're still going back and forth on some language change is um, it's with CCRTA right now, so I'll be looking forward to receiving their feedback. Um, so I don't think it's going to be resolved in the immediate future, but I'm hopeful that it will happen um, very soon, that we'll have that signed lease agreement and can get that vehicle on the road. It's a beautiful vehicle. Um, I'm excited and the drivers are excited to utilize it. Um, so hopefully very soon that, that process will be finalized. You folks are frozen for me again. I don't know. Can you hear me still? Yeah. We can hear you. Okay. All right. I'll jump into my last section before I lose you entirely. Um, so just in terms of our, my regular report on volunteer needs and recruitment, um, I had mentioned, I think, for the last couple of months that we're looking to onboard some new reception help. We have had folks reach out to us, um, and then it didn't end up being a good fit or didn't end up working so it is still a need, um, particularly as we're scaling up with folk schedules. Um, Emily, you're, you're our coming. on site operations, um, I'd say it's a significant need to get. Emily, you're, you're popping at up least one out. more, potentially two more folks in who could do you know, three, six, nine hours per week um, is really what we're we're looking for. Um, and then the one other thing um, is find and looking for is someone who would use our van. Um, so the volunteer would ride with this resident on the van, assist them with grocery shopping, um, and then assist them in getting their groceries, you know, to their door. There's no exchange of funds or anything like that. This person's totally independent in terms of, you know, checking out. It's really just helping them um, select their items and, and get them home. This is someone who's looking to go every other week and we're targeting Thursday afternoons. Um, so if anyone is interested, again, it's maybe an hour and a half, two hours total commitment riding there and riding back. Um, and it would be a, a great assistance to this resident if anyone's interested in that. So I'd say those are our two um, volunteer needs right now. If you know anyone in your circles or your networks, um, we would certainly appreciate hearing from folks interested in those opportunities. 
And with that, I will put myself back on mute and hope that I can continue to hear the rest of you uh, for the remainder of the meeting. Emily, stay unmuted because you broke up when you were talking and I, we believe you were talking about the reception help that your a couple did not work out. You had a couple of people approach you, but you're still looking for a couple of volunteers, three, six or nine hours a week. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so if we, you know, if only one person wanted to commit nine hours, that would be great. If we have a few people who are interested, they're about three hour shifts. So we could divvy that up um, among a couple new volunteers if we heard from a number of people. So really whatever kind of combination of hours worked best based on interest, we could make work here. Okay, so I, I am planning it, as, as you had mentioned, a, a social media push for some of these things. I will also get on the selectmen's meeting on Monday night under public comment or announcements looking because we got a good group of people who are watching those meetings now consistently. See if we can get put an announcement there to get some uh, additional help as well. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to share? Emily, could I ask about that every other Thursday? I couldn't make out exactly what you were looking for. Oh, sure. Thank you. Um, so it's we have a resident who's looking for assistance with grocery shopping. Um, he is legally blind. And so it's uh, we ride on the van. The volunteer would ride on the van with the resident, assist with grocery shopping, and then ride back on the van um, to that person's home to help them get their groceries to the door. Um, so the way we had a volunteer for the last few months who's had to um, transition to other uh, time commitments, but um, she would meet the van here at the Council on Aging and then be return here to the Council on Aging and then go home. Um, so I'd say probably an hour and a half to two hours in total as a time commitment and that's every other week. Do you have anyone at all now for that opportunity? We do, we do not. Okay, because I did it on one occasion and I, I knew that I somebody else had done it on another occasion, but you haven't got anybody that's committed to it. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Joanne or Angie? Uh, no, so far things are going well. Okay, anything else, Emily, today? That is it on my end. Thank you very much. Okay, we are still looking for a new liaison for elder services. Um, by default, if we do not get a member, I think I'm going to have to step in. I'm, I'm working with them now. Um, not sure the bandwidth can handle it, and uh, I would still like to get a volunteer to step up within that role if we could. Um, but I think it's too important to let it go by the wayside. So uh, we'll continue working on that. If, uh, if you speak to any of the committee members who are interested, we would... Uh, be very anxious to have someone appointed to that particular role. Joanne did a great job for a number of years. And Joanne, you enjoyed that, didn't you, working with Elder Service? I did very, very much. It was very informative and uh, everybody uh, working together for the elders, it's wonderful. Great. Okay, is there anything else to come before us this morning? Nothing for me. Emily, anything else from you? I am all set. Thank you very much. Thank you all for spending your time with us today. We appreciate your commitment to the seniors, their caregivers and families in this community. And if there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank Seconded. you. Seconded. Uh, all in favor, Joanne? Aye. Ralph? Yes. Angie? Yes. And I'm an aye and that's unanimous. Thank you all for your time. Emily, thank you for your continued good work.